Father, we thank you. We appreciate your presence in this place. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your glory that is in this place. Thank you for every man. Thank you for every woman. For every soul that is here present. We thank you for touching our life. We thank you for transforming us today. We thank you for blessing us, for meeting us at the point of our need. We thank you, above all, for being our God, for being a faithful God you are, for being holy, for being good to us, for being ever-present, even in the time of trouble, for being a God who never forsakes us, we give you honor and praise. We join the heavenly host to declare your holiness, to declare your majesty, to declare your glory from this house. We honor you and we adore you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have your free course here. Move as you will. Move as you will. Move as you will. We are here, Lord. Thank you so much. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Those people give the Lord a mighty hand. Celebrate. Ulule, you are in praise. Hallelujah. Let me hear some ululation. Now, that's better. That's better. Let me hear more ululation than that. Oh my God. Glory, glory. Thank you very much. You may be seated in His presence. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. Help me to welcome your neighbor uh, who is beside you and say, neighbor, congratulations. Hallelujah. Welcome the other one on the other side. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, those that are here for the first time, uh, lift up your hands. You can stand. Let's give you special welcome. You are here for the first time. You may stand on your feet so that we give you special greeting. Okay. You are forgetting the, the price. There is a price. Hallelujah. Don't forget the price. Don't forget there is a reward for everyone that brings a visitor. Amen. So, remember that. Hallelujah. Amen. You are missing out a lot. Mm. Let's also welcome our our online church those that are watching us through our social media platforms you're welcome remember distance is not a barrier you are here we are there hallelujah so welcome and uh, may god bless you as you are joining us wherever you are in this uh, world you are welcome amen, amen. hallelujah Hallelujah. We thank God for yet another opportunity to hear His Word. To hear from Him. Hallelujah. Amen. See, whatever is happening, the most important thing is what God is saying. Hallelujah. Amen. If I can hear what He said, that will be enough hallelujah that will be enough hallelujah Amen. somebody hold the, the camera for me so that my technician fix this mic somebody hold the camera for me so that my technician fix this mic for me it's not coming all right so coming all right it has got some uh, some sound that is not okay okay hallelujah Amen. 
Are you ready to hear the word of God? Amen. Let us um, let us begin from the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter chapter twelve. Let us begin from Hebrews chapter twelve. Uh, as we begin. Let's see what God has for us in this day. Hebrews chapter 12, verse, uh, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Yes. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth, easy, which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless the reading of his word. Amen. 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 Wherefore sin we are also come. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean surrounded Amen. by a great, great cloud of witness. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Great cloud of witnesses. They are compassing us. Hallelujah. Amen. We are surrounded by this great cloud. It's a cloud. Of Amen. witnesses. Mm. Let somebody say a cloud of witnesses. A cloud, a cloud of, of witnesses. witnesses. Hallelujah. Amen. Every move you are making is being watched. Hallelujah. Amen. You are under the heavenly watch. Hallelujah. Amen. You are under the what? Amen. Heavenly Amen. watch. They are witnesses that are watching you, that are conversing you. Hallelujah. Amen. That are surrounding you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are compassed. We are surrounded Amen. by a great cloud of witness. Yes, you are getting there. Hallelujah. Amen. What are these? Who are these cloud of witness? Hallelujah. Amen. Who are these cloud of witness? Who are these that are compassing us? Hallelujah. Amen. They are those that have gone ahead of us. Amen. They are those that have gone ahead of what? Us. Of us. Those saints that have finished their race. Those saints that have run ahead of us Amen. are cheering us up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They are a cloud of what? Of witness. Who are cheering us up. Why? Because it's a race. It's a what? It's a race. If you are running a race, Amen. you cannot just run. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you run a race, you are welcome, daughter. It's good to see you. Hallelujah. It's good Amen. to see you. Hallelujah. Amen. You cannot just run when there is no one cheering you up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Also, in this spiritual journey, you may not see them. But they are there with you. Amen. They are wishing you could go ahead. They are wishing you could you could run faster. Hallelujah. Amen. They are wishing you could conquer whatever you are facing. Amen. They are a cloud of what? Witnesses. They are compassing us. It's, it's, uh, thank you so much. Hallelujah. Amen. They are a cloud of what? Of witnesses. Of witnesses. says, let us therefore run this race. Hallelujah. Amen. With perseverance. It's a race. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us run this what? Race. This race. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm, my God. Hallelujah. Amen. But before we run, you have to understand when you are when you're running, you have to be ready. Hallelujah. Yeah. There are things that ought to be dealt with. Hallelujah. Amen. As we are therefore compassed about with great cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight. Everybody say, lay aside every weight. Lay aside every weight. Now, this is the biggest problem. Weights. Weights. Tell me about weights. Weights. Are the biggest problem. Reason why we cannot run effectively. The reason why we are not even running the way we should is because of weights. 
we are getting weight. Hallelujah. As you know, what kind of weight are you carrying? That's why church is so sick today. Church is sick. Believe I sick. Why? Wait. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Wait. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What are you wait? <laughs> this is the problem. This is the what? The problem. There is a rest to be run. Man of God, I want to run, but I've got a lot of what? Yes. And now I'm going to explain to you the kind of weight. Some of these weights, God will not come and say, and remove it for you, like remove the weight. Uh-uh. The Bible says, lay it what? Aside. aside. My God. Yeah. You know what? Lay it aside. Say to your neighbor, lay it aside. Lay it aside. It's a decision that you have to make. Amen. You have to make a decision that I don't like a life of grace. You understand? Amen. Jealous is a weight. You see others that are prospering. You see somebody that is making it. You feel like you're going to die because of jealous. That's a way. It's time for prayer. You are just opening your eyes. Thank you. That, that brother is doing well. That sister is doing well. Lay it aside. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And forgiveness is a way. People will be in church, but they are harboring a lot of anger towards that person. A lot of anger. And forgiveness is a what? Wait. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you talking of anger? Anger is one of the most corrosive things. You know what sulfuric acid? You touch sulfuric acid, you are going to be bent. Any part of your cloth touches sulfuric acid, it, it will just, I mean, it get consumed. That's how anger is. Anger is very corrosive. If you want to die, uh, to die young, I want to give you a recipe of dying young. You want to die young? No. Keep anger. Yes. You, you will not last. And if you want to grow older very fast, <laughs> live in anger. Yes. I have told you time without number that uh, the energy you need to maintain anger <laughs> is double the energy you need for you to be happy. Yeah. That's why when you are angry, you finish the whole loaf of bread. <laughs> ah, what goes on with this member? We give you that whole up and you finish it. Why? When you are angry, you need more you need more calories to support your anger. Yeah. Meaning to say anger is very expensive to maintain. Yeah. Huh? They are giving you problems. If they are giving you problems, you can let them go. Or put their smile on. Amen. Amen. It's a new thing, so he's still trying to master it. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. Anger is very expensive to maintain. When you get angry, that what will happen? You will develop other problems. You will develop ulcer. Now you need medication. You will develop hypertension. Now you need consultation to the doctor. You will have a headache. Are you getting what I'm saying? Anger is what? Expensive. Expensive. That's why the Bible has talking, spoken to us in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 5. Be angry. Tell your neighbor, you are permitted to be angry. Yes. You are permitted to be angry. You are permitted to be what? Amen. Let me let me show you that scripture. Someone say, Man of God, I think you are speaking from your head. This is difficult. Alright. Ephesians chapter chapter 5. Is it chapter 5 or chapter 4? Let, let's see. Alright. Chapter 4, verse 26. Okay? Let's hear what the what the the, 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 the word of God says. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Yes. Be angry and sin not. Listen to me. Listen to me. Amen. The Bible does not dismiss that you you are flesh, you are made, you have emotion. The Bible is not in denial that you are made of wood. No. The Bible does not dismiss that you are the Bible does not dismiss that you are what? That you have got emotion. It acknowledges that you have emotion. Amen. Amen. And emotions are a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Emotions are what? Blessing. They are a blessing. Emotions are a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. 
we can use them to express ourselves, Amen. even to God. Amen. We express ourselves by emotion. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. But if emotions are not put under check, they become a curse. Many people got disqualified from their blessing because of emotion. Amen. 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 Emotions are what? Are a blessing. But if they don't, they are not put under check, they can they can either make you or break you. It says, be angry, but sin not. Hallelujah. You can you are permitted. And look, there's another issue there. Read again. Read again. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Be ye angry and sin not. Uh -huh. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Don't let the sun go down. That means minimize the time you, are, you, you get angry. Minimize it. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. It's not like it, we don't face things that cause us anger. anger. We are just doing it for ourselves. If you see you, you, us not getting angry, if you see me not getting angry, I am doing it not for you, but actually for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the more I bear that anger, it's killing me. Anger kills the bearer of it. Amen. Amen. It destroys the one that is carrying it. Amen. Am I talking to you? Amen. It destroys the one that is what? Most of the time, someone that you are angry, uh, you have anger towards, they are moving on there, and you are suffering. Mm. Hallelujah! Amen. You are suffering, mm. and that is one of the ways we have to deal with. Minimize the time you get angry, because you are destroying yourself. Hallelujah! Amen. You are what? This is a very serious thing. Are you hearing me? Amen. And this is what is keeping you down. Simple as it is. This is what is keeping you down. Man, I'm going to need breakthrough. Man, I'm going to need breakthrough. The moment breakthrough is about to come, mm. anger. Hey. Hey. I, I deal with many people even every day I pray for people. Mm. They're telling me, man, I'm going to just say a word of prayer. This is more than a prayer what I'm giving you. After teaching you these things, you don't need prayer. You are free. Amen. <laughs> You are what? Sorry. You are free. Keep out anger. Lay it aside. Tell yourself, I will not be angry against anyone. Amen. I want to do it not for them, mm. for me. Amen. I want to live long. Be happy. Amen. Be happy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Minimize the time of what? Minimize it. Minimize it. And let's see the breakthroughs that over. Money will not come. Money will not come to any angry heart. Hey. Let me tell you why you are wrong. You are angry. <laughs> <laughs> angry hearts, they don't prosper. That's why you are wrong. Yes. You are not happy. Be happy and you will see money coming. Yes. I'm telling you the truth. Yes. Be happy and you will see what? Money coming. Everyone that is so angry, money is very sensitive. Mama. It won't come to an angry heart. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Amen. Tell me about money does not come to an angry heart. That's why it's that moment you are angry, you even lose money. You lose money. True of us. You lose money. Amen. Amen. Every, because everything around you catches from your atmosphere. Have you seen that everything catches from your atmosphere? The atmosphere you create, everything around you become it catches that atmosphere. Everything, if you are angry, even the chair that you are sitting becomes angry. It will make you feel good. <laughs> are you angry? You take an iron, you want to iron it, it bends your cloth. That's why when you are angry, you try to iron the iron bends. The, the iron also is angry. It's angry. Are you angry? You try to sit in the car, the car is misbehaving. Remember, you see the car misbehaving. So, uh, what's wrong with it? It's angry also because you are what? Angry. Hey. <laughs> you come to church to hear what God is saying. This is what he's saying. 
<laughs> this is what he's saying. Hallelujah. Amen. I am delivered from that too overexcited preaching. I tell you what God is saying. And this is what will give you breakthrough. Viewers all over the world. Deal away with me. Teach yourself. I will not live an angry life. Amen. Go out there and see how the, this world is an angry world. I was watching women's soccer. And you saw wow, the woman that is trending on the internet right now. You can see that this woman is a good woman, but there is what? Too much anger. One woman fell to the ground and she's trying to jump that woman. She steps on her like that. And people say, ah, ah, was that necessary? And they had to use the VAR to say, you know, red card. She, she cannot play two matches right now. It's trending on your internet. And when people look at it, it's being talked about all over the world. What was it really necessary when another a fellow woman is down? When you're about you to jump all over here, you just you step on it like this. <laughs> you can actually see that it's an angry world. It's an angry world. It's an angry world. Everywhere you go, it's an angry world. God wants us to lay aside this word because it's blocking the what? The blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. This is one of the demons that is blocking the blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me show you something in the book of Genesis. We are still talking about the rest. Genesis chapter 20. No, no, no. Genesis chapter 49, I believe. Let me show you something. 49, 49 of Genesis. All right. Are you being blessed? Amen. Okay, thank you. All right, 49, 49, 49, okay. <coughs> so Jacob was blessing his, um, his children. Okay? Let's go to verse 5, I believe. Verse 5. Genesis chapter 49, verse mm. 5. Mm -hmm. Simeon and Levi mm -hmm. are brethren, instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. Mm -hmm. O my souls, come not thou into their secret, mm -hmm. unto their assembly. Mine honor be not thou united. For in their anger they slew a man, uh -huh. and in their self-will they dig down a wall. Look at seven. Cursed be their anger, be their for want. it was fierce. Cursed be their what? Their mm -hmm. anger. Cursed be their what? Their anger. Because it was what? Fierce. Look at what he said. He said, I'm not going to come in their, in their meetings. I'm not going to come in their tents because of anger. This is not Jacob talking, understand that. This is not him. The spirit of the Lord is talking upon him. The spirit of prophecy is upon him. Hallelujah. Amen. Simeon and Levi are instruments of cruelty. Hallelujah. Amen. They are cruel. And he said, I'm not going to come in their, in their secret. I'm not going to come in their tents. Cast be their anger. Cursed with their anger. Meaning to say, they are not cursed, but the anger they are harboring is cursed. Do you understand what is called an accursed thing? An accursed thing is something cursed that begins to cause you to be under a curse, even if you are not under a curse. It's like you are not under a curse. Are you following? Yeah. You are not under a curse, but you are carrying something that is under what? A like what? Uh, Akan. You remember Akan? Oh, you are <laughs> You remember when the children of Israel were about to go into Canaan? Yes. They came to Jericho. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says Jericho was shut because the walls of Jericho were high. Mm -hmm. They built higher walls to fortify themselves. Are you following? Yes. They built what? Higher walls to fortify themselves. And God delivered the Israel, the, the Israel, uh, Jericho into the hands of the Israel. That is where you talk about the walls of Jericho. What yeah. fell as they were going round seven times. I have no time for details. If I had time, I'll teach you the significance of those march. But we have no time. Now God gave an instruction, and God said, "You shall not touch anything that belongs to Jericho. Whether gold, anything that belongs to this city." Is dedicated to destruction. Say dedicated to destruction. Dedicated to destruction. The word dedicated to destruction means accursed. Say accursed. accursed. Something accursed means something 
dedicated to destruction. Are you hearing me? It is something dedicated to what? Destruction. So when they destroyed the walls of Jericho fell, there is a man from the tribe of Judah by the name Achan. He took the Babylonian white garment mm. and the gold from Jericho. And he went and hid it under his tent. He went and hid it under his what? Mm. Tent. And this happened now. The children of Israel went to attack a, 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 a another country. That is called Ai. Somebody say Ai. Ai. I'm helping those who don't read Bible. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So when the children of Israel went to attack these people called the, uh, the, the people of Ai, these people were careless. They had no army, no nothing. They were very careless people. They just lived carelessly. They never worried. They were carefree people. And the children of Israel said, ah, don't worry about these people. We need a few soldiers to go and defeat them. We need a few soldiers to go and what? defeat them because they have no army. They don't even, they, 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 they are not even worried about anything. They are carefree people. Israel sent few soldiers. Guess what? Those soldiers which were sent from Israel were defeated. Hallelujah. Amen. They were defeated. And Joshua, being the leader of this congregation, went and lied prostrate before God. The Bible says, he lay before God until evening, saying, how can Israel be defeated? We have defeated a mighty nation. A small nation is defeating us. Hallelujah. Like we have dealt with bigger issues. How can small problem now give us problems? Hallelujah. And the Lord says, rise up from the ground. You have committed sin. You have taken an accursed thing. You can never win. Hallelujah. Amen. You have tied in what? In a case thing. You can never what? Win. Because that thing is causing destruction. It's dedicated to destruction. So the moment you carry that thing, it means you also are dedicated to what? Destruction. That's why you are being defeated by the enemy. And they casted lots. Because they didn't have what? The Holy Spirit. So they casted lots. Lots were done. Because there was no Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. we, are not, we are no longer casting lots now. We don't have to cast lots. Because yeah. we have the what? No. The, Holy the Holy Spirit. If God wants to say which one of us do we choose here, we ask the Holy Spirit. He will reveal. That's why you see in the, in the New Testament, in Acts chapter 13, they were praying and the Holy Spirit spoke to them. Separate from me, Saul and Barabbas. So they don't need what? Lots. So when they casted lots, the Lord pointed the tribe of Judah. And they casted lots again. The house of Achan was found. And Achan said, tell us what happened. He said, no, I took a Babylonian garment and gold. And Joshua said, you have troubled the whole nation. You have troubled Israel. And God is going to trouble you today. They stoned him to death in the valley of Achan. Even up to date, they say the stones are there. It's called the Valley of Akan. Akan, the Valley of Akan means trouble. Hallelujah. Amen. He touched something that was dedicated to destruction. So that is what I'm trying to teach you. That the man is saying, cursed be your end. Not that you are cursed, but you have something that is releasing spirit of curse. Something that is releasing spirit of what? Yes. It's like a, a little leaven that leaven the what the whole lamb. You are not a problem, but that thing which you have is causing you failure. You're not a failure. Are you hearing me? But something that you are doing is just a habit which is causing failure. The moment you do away with that habit, you begin to prosper. And that is a situation that doesn't just go by prayer. That's one weakest problem, the weakest this generation is. Hallelujah. Amen. This generation thinks that everything goes by prayer. If you just pray for me, men of God, and when it doesn't change, they say, ah, there's no power. <laughs> there's no power. Listen to me. Many of the problems we have, they need our participation. Amen. I hear me. Amen. Most of the changes we are looking for come by changing. It is us that has to what? Change. 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 And then the change what? Comes. It will never, the change that you want will not come. Independent of your personal change. If right now I want God to do something in my life right now, I begin to check. This is what I do. 
If God says I'm bringing to you a new season, I begin to ask myself, what do I have to do in proportion to this new season? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What do I have to do? Now that God wants to do something new, remember what Jesus taught. He said you cannot put new wine in old bottles. Why? Because the wine in the bottles are going to be lost. Because the new wine shall break the old bottles. The wine will be lost and the bottles will be, all, will be also one. Lost. So if you want new wine, we, want, we will see you finding new bottles. Hallelujah. We will see you renewing your mind. We will see you renewing yourself. That's what happens to somebody who is ready for a new season. You cannot have a new season if you have old mentality. Amen. Some of you here, you think you are in 2023. 20, you, are, you are still in 19, in the 90s. <laughs> because you are saying you are celebrating New Year. You are celebrating New Year. It can never be a new season if you go on with carryovers. It can just be a change of calendar, but no change of season. Many of us, we are doing change of calendar. But there's no change of season. Why? Your mentality, your attitude, you have carryovers. You carried, you dragged the things of last year. Today, you end up with them. You carried the, the, the problem, the offenses of last year, the problems of this, and you have them not right now. So what makes this year different from the other? That's why the, the time goes and things are the same. Hallelujah. Amen. Change comes by our change. If I want change, I have to change. Hallelujah. I have to change the way I'm doing things. Hallelujah. If I want change, I cannot continue to do things the same way. You have heard this thing so many times. Doing things the same way and expecting to get different results. It's foolishness. Okay? So if I want difference, I must change the way I'm doing things. Let me change the way I do things. Let me change even my daily schedules. Let me change. Let me cut off this and uh, this one I remove. This one I take. Hallelujah. Amen. Change the way you are doing things. Change Amen. the input and the output will change. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Change even the way you are praying. Change the way you are praying. Amen. If you need revival, we have to change the way we are praying. We cannot expect revival. You pray for five minutes and then you sit. You say, God, revival. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Like some of this generation makes me laugh because sometimes. You, you pray once a week and say, I've been praying, man of God, I've been praying. <laughs> Nothing is changing. <laughs> I've been praying, man of God. Nothing is changing. They are angry towards God. How, how long have you prayed? Yeah. I just pray once uh, every week. For how long? Maybe for five minutes. I've been praying about this. <laughs> man of God, I'm so disappointed. <laughs> are, you, are, you sure you're praying? are you sure you're praying? Are you sure you're praying? Hey. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you sure you're praying? If you really want to pray, then you have to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 If you read Luke chapter 18, you will see what is prayer. Hallelujah. You will see, you read, uh, I think, Luke chapter 11. You will see what is prayer. The widow being to the, Jesus said this parable to the end that men ought to pray and not fail. Hallelujah. Amen. Men ought to pray and not what? Faint. The widow going, going, asking for what? For justice. I want justice. And the Bible says she used, she was going to a place where there was no hope. She was going to a place where there was hopelessness. The Bible says the judge feared not God, regarded no man. You are going to look for justice from such a person who does not fear God, who does not regard men. Which justice are you looking for there? You are looking for justice in the wrong place, but the widow said, I will continue to go. My justice will come. Amen. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor, my justice is going to come. My justice is going to come. All this I'm facing, all the enemies that are fighting me, I will get justice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You will get justice over this poverty you are facing. Amen. This poverty is not ordinary now. Hallelujah. Amen. You will get justice. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This rejection is not normal. Hallelujah. Amen. You are going to get your justice. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. 
when somebody declares and say, God begin to judge my enemies. God begin to judge my enemies. I cannot hear you. God begin to judge my enemies. Hallelujah. Amen. So she kept going, knocking, banging on the door. I think it was not a, it was not a gentle knock. Banging on the door. Hallelujah. She was like a crazy person. You know, there are times that you have to act like you have lost your mind. Unless you reach those levels, sometimes you will not see breakthrough. Amen. When you feel like you are, you are losing it, and even people comment, they say, this way you are praying the whole night, is everything all right? You say, you know what, <laughs> I need justice, hallelujah. Amen. This way we hear you at the middle of the night, are you okay? You say, you know what, I need justice, hallelujah. Amen. You think that blind but me as I was saying, oh, damn it. That was a shout. It was a shout. It was disturbing the peace. They had to say, hey, please, shut up. You're making noise. It was disturbing the peace. Hallelujah. Amen. It was what? Disturbing the peace. The Bible says he refused to keep by. Because he knew what he wanted. Hallelujah. Amen. So the woman banged the door. Banged the door. Until that, that judge said, though I don't fear God, though I don't regard men, let me give this woman justice. Otherwise, I won't have rest. <laughs> Otherwise, I won't have rest. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Read Isaiah 62. I want to teach you right now. I'm touching a lot of issues now. Isaiah 62 and see what I'm talking about. I want to show you something. The man said, I will not have what? Rest. What does it say, 62 verse 1? Isaiah 62 verse 5. Verse 1. Verse 1. Yeah. Isaiah 62 verse 1. For Zion's sake. Hear that. Hear that. Will I not hold my peace? I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake. Yes. I will not rest. I will not what? Rest. You are resting. Some of us will rest before we even work. <laughs> well, what the definition of laziness is resting before you work. <laughs> that's, that's the definition of laziness. What is being less? It is to rest before you want to wait. You want to rest. There's no rest when things are like this. Hallelujah. Don't rest. If you're, if they say that if your if your bed is very close to your to your door, you don't have to rest. Huh? They want. They say if you want to measure how poor you are. Check the distance. the distance between your bed and your door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Come on, people. Huh? If things are like that, don't rest. Amen. Come on. My sister, don't rest. Fight Amen. poverty. Fight Amen. it. Hallelujah. Amen. You will get there. I am not trying to, to, to despise you. I'm just trying to challenge you. Don't rest. Amen. That distance between your bed and your door, mm. if it's too close, that means you have to, you don't have to rest. Fight. Amen. Fight poverty. If you see poverty, fight it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Fight it to your every fiber. Fight it. Are you hearing me? Amen. Fight to your every fiber. Poverty is an enemy. Are you hearing me? Amen. If there is something you have to fight, listen to me. The way you fight poverty, Determines how your kids will live. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Fight it to a level that you make a covenant that it will end here. Amen. When my kids take over, they won't live this kind of thing. Yes. Fight it. Yes. Crush its head when you see it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> Punish it. Are you hearing me? Amen. That's one of the most tormenting demons. Are you hearing me? Amen. So. The woman got here a justice. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But hear what the scripture says. It said, give him, it says what? I will not hold my peace. For, Jer for Zion's sake. No, I will not hold my, my peace. peace. For, and Jer for Jerusalem's sake. Uh -huh. I will not rest. I will not rest. Until the righteousness therefore thereof oh my God. go forth as brightness. Oh. And the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. That is the lamp that burneth. Hallelujah. Amen. Take a pause there. I'm coming there. Hallelujah. See, there are men that, that, that challenge God. See, there are men that pray. There's a man that I always caught. He was a man of prayer who, who, who lived in England. And um, he, his name was John, John Knox. John Knox was praying for, for the revival of Scotland. 
His prayer was very simple. Father, give me Scotland or I die. That was his prayer. Give me Scotland or I what? I die. And he prayed that prayer. Give me Scotland. And revival began to break forth in, in, in Scotland. To the level that the Queen of England said, I'm, I fear John Knox's prayers more than the armies of England combined. I'm afraid of his prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm afraid of the prayers of this man. Give me Scotland or I want. Do not rest. Do not hold your peace. Hallelujah. Do not rest. Right now it looks like you are tolerating the situation. The way you are praying, it looks like you are okay with the situation. Hallelujah. Amen. You are still sleeping from morning to from morning to from uh, from 8 p.m. to morning. You are still okay. You are still fine. Amen. Amen. If you, if things get real bad, you only sleep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You won't sleep. You've been prayer seeking God. Hallelujah. You've been prayer seeking the Lord. He said, give him no rest. Hold not your peace. All right, you read the other part of that scripture. Mm. I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness mm -hmm. and the salvation thereof as a lamb that burneth. Okay, there's another part that I wanted. Go to the next verse. Verse 2. Yes. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness. Yes. And all kings thy glory. Yes. And thou shalt be called by a new name. What which the mean? mouth of the Lord shall name. Mm. Verse 3. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory mm -hmm. in the hand of the Lord, mm -hmm. and a royal diadem mm -hmm. in the hand of thy God. Yes. Verse 4. Thou shalt not more be called, thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, mm -hmm. neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hes Hespa. Okay. And thy land, Beulah, for the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be right, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, this is, this is very, very, very important. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, this is how, how prayer ought to be done. This is how prayer ought to be done. If you read Luke chapter 11, you understand the art of prayer. Luke chapter 11, you understand the art of prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go there. Let's go there. We are going to go back to our proof text very soon. Luke chapter 11, read for me from verse 1. Luke chapter 11 from verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, mm -hmm. when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, Teach us to pray, Teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Okay. And he said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, mm. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Mm -hmm. Give us day by day our daily bread, okay. and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Amen. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Okay. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three logs. For a friend of mine is in his journey, is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he, he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, the door is and my now what? children are shut. Somebody say the door is now shut. The, the door, door is, is now shut. shut. Family, listen. Prayer deals with closed doors. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. Someone you say, man of God, my financial doors are shut. Things are not okay. Prayer deals with what? Shut doors. Doors that are shut. Hallelujah. Amen. Prayer deals with that. Say the doors are what? I shout. Hallelujah. Read. And my children are with me in bed. Mm -hmm. I cannot rise and give thee. I cannot rise and give thee. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So prayer turns a no to a yes. Amen. Turns a no to a what? A yes. If they say no to you, don't fight them. Go in the closet. Go in the what? In the closet. If they shout at you at first, where you go? Don't fight them. Go and pray. Go back again. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Go back again. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? Amen. There are places where they rejected you. Go in prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. And try again. Prayer tends a no to your heart. Yes. To your yes. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a no that should be a no. Hallelujah. But there is a no that should be a yes. Are you getting what I'm saying? Amen. Prayer opens, closed doors, and also turns a, a no to a yes. Don't quickly just accept a no. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Don't quickly accept a what? A no. Many situations will say no. You try, you say what? No. Don't be intimidated by that. Pray more. Hallelujah. Pray more. Many doors seem like they won't open. Pray more. Hallelujah. Read for me. In verse 8, mm -hmm. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, mm -hmm. because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity. Because of his importunity. Let me explain that word importunity. Everybody say importunity. Importunity. Everyone say importunity. Importunity. Yes, you are learning an English word, okay? That word. <laughs> so if, if they ask you what did you learn at church, you say importunity. Speak like a British. Okay? <laughs> okay. All right. Praise God. Amen. That word importunity means shamelessness. Somebody say shamelessness. Shamelessness. Have you seen people that are shameless? There are people that even when you want to, you, when you don't want to give them anything. They will, if you don't want to give them food, you feel them like that. I prepared a special meal. The definition. The definition, okay. It says persistence, especially to the point of annoyance. To the point of annoyance. Oh my God. Persistence to the point of what? Annoyance. There are people that even if you don't want to give them money, they will annoy you. That friend of yours, that will annoy you until you say, ah! Yes, the man, you understand? That's, the, that's importunity. Hallelujah. Amen. Those people that are daring, are you hearing me? Yes. Daring people that you can't say no to them. You actually know if that friend will never take a no for an answer. Mm. If they say, I want to go with you there, you can say, ah, I'm tired. They will tell you, they will, pers they will torment you until you say, ah, fine, let's go. You understand? That's importunity. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is teaching. He said, you will not rise up to give him bread because he's, he, he, he's his friend. He will rise up because of his what? Importunity. That degree of annoying, you keep knocking at the door. You realize that if we continue to sleep, we won't even sleep. This member will keep knocking at the door. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says, he will rise up to give him bread. But he will not give him one day. He will give him as many as he wants. That's the art of God. The art of prayer. If you are praying, pray to the point of breakthrough. Hallelujah. Amen. Pray to the point of breakthrough. How do you know that your prayer is effective? Hallelujah. Pray until the rain comes. Amen. 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 Pray until the rain what? Yes. Don't pray and say, ah, it's not coming. Keep praying. It will come. Elijah prayed seven times. First time there was nothing. Second time there was nothing. Let me tell you, are you listening? Amen. It is possible to pray and nothing is happening. Never say to a person who is praying, why is it your prayers are not working? You are not spiritual. Never say that to a person who is praying. Never say to them, oh, I don't see the results of your prayer. Because even generals of God prayed and nothing happened. Amen. But that, that, that did not mean that nothing was what? There are days that I would pray. I always say this testimony. I would pray in the garage. I was 3 a.m. to 3 p.m. sometimes praying in the garage for 12 hours. But it looks like heaven was shut. One day she had to ask me, when you're praying in the garage, are you really talking to God? Are you talking to God or something? Why is it things are so tight, left, right, and center? Everything is shut. Nothing. So let me be very honest with you, family. You may pray and things may not happen. Don't worry. Amen. Enjoy that season of Amen. nothingness. Amen. Enjoy it. 
This is the problem you people do. When you get into a time when you see pray, 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 nothing happens. You say, ah, man of God, I stopped. Yeah. I was waking up with that prayer. And what happened? Man of God, I stopped. Why? I saw that nothing is happening. This is what I hear from people. Man of God, I was fasting every Wednesday. What happened? I stopped. Why? Because the more I fasted, man of God, it looks like things were getting worse. That's a sign that your prayers are working. Because the more you're praying and you find people are attacking you, somebody is just attacking you, sending message, they're, they're cursing you, you know that all oh, my prayer is working. The devil is under fire. Are, are, you, are you learning something? You, if you are using a wrong revelation. That's why you, you pray, pray, pray for two, for two days. You stop. Because the moment you start praying, you are putting the devil on fire and he starts to retaliate. Yeah. Pray even when there is nothing happening. Wake up and continue to do those fasting. Amen. Go back to those fasting. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Go back to those fastings and do them. Do them. Sometimes it's a time of God is training you. Hallelujah. Amen. Endurance. He's training you also to trust in him. He's also training you. Hallelujah. Amen. To be patient. Amen. That's why the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord. Why is it called waiting? Waiting is not just sitting and then I'm waiting for someone. No. That word wait means intertwined. Amen. Say intertwined. Intertwined. So when we are waiting for, uh, for those who wait upon the Lord, that means we are, we are not just waiting. Like what they were doing at Pentecost, they were waiting. Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem. The word tarry means what? Wait. And they were tarrying in Jerusalem. They were not just sitting miserably saying, who took our master? No. They were praying. That is waiting. Praying. The Bible says in the upper room with the women, 120 of them were praying. And the Bible says when the day of Pentecost had fully come, the Spirit of God came upon them like a rushing mighty wind. They were waiting. Praying. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a time of waiting. When you're waiting and you're praying and it looks like everyone else is going, don't worry. It looks like things are not happening. Don't worry. You will get into the season of harvest. Amen. You will get into the season of the rain. Amen. Can I encourage you? Yes. The season of the rain is coming. Amen. Keep what you are doing. Hallelujah. Put the seeds on the ground. When the rain falls, you are going to see those seeds coming. And then you are going to say, oh my God, these are the seeds that I was planting. Hallelujah. Amen. These are the prayers that I have prayed. Hallelujah. Amen. There are prayers that are being answered right now that I prayed a long time ago. And I even forgot I prayed about it. Just now I begin to see the fulfillment of those prayers. There's no prayer that is lost. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Prayer is an investment. You don't invest and then tomorrow you say, ah, give me my, my dividends. <laughs> <laughs> give me my dividends. You understand? Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Even some of you, when you lived in the village, some of us lived in the, in the sticks. There is a fruit that you take, those, those fruits, you dig them in the ground. You bury them. You put a stick so that you don't forget. You put a what? A stick. After some days, maybe five days, you go and dig those fruits. You take them, they will be ripe. Because they will, the warmth of the ground makes them to ripe fast. Are you hearing me? Amen. But you know what baboons will do? Baboons, they have that, and they will take those fruits and put them on the ground. Cover them for two minutes, they dig them. <laughs> that time. They dig them that very moment, you understand? That's what Bakun will do. They, they bury them, and then after a few minutes, they dig them. What is happening? They have no patience. <laughs> they have no patience. They have no what? Patience. So when you put your stuff down, you know, it's you, you, you would put a sign. People would actually imagine, they would never know that there are fruits there. That are right. And when you get them out of there, they are very sweet and right. Unfortunately, some of you will never understand. <laughs> you will never understand what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, prayer is an investment. Amen. When you are praying, you must know, I am investing. Hallelujah. Amen. And that which I am investing shall come back to me. Hallelujah. Amen. That means, whatever prayer you are praying, even if you don't see the immediate response, don't worry. Keep praying, hallelujah. Amen. Pray more, pray more, pray more, pray more, and you reap from your prayer, hallelujah. Amen. The book of Hebrews chapter chapter 4, verse uh, 17 or 18, it teaches us that prayer can be banked. 
prayer can be invested. You can bank prayer. Hallelujah. And you withdraw from that prayer at some point. Hallelujah. Read for me. Hebrews chapter. Chapter 4. The last. I just know it's the last verse. Sometimes it's 16. It's or verse 18. 16. Verse 16, yes. I just Hebrews know it's chapter last 4, verse 16. Yes. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace uh -huh. that we may obtain mercy okay. and find grace okay. to help in time of need. Grace to use when? In time of need. So do you mean that praying when things are happening? Usually that's what we do. You see right now, people when, when, when time of COVID came, people were not praying. I tell him of Jesus. <laughs> it means everyone is commenting, we are praying. Mm. You are too late now. <laughs> you are too late. You are too what? Late. You were supposed to pray so that there is grace to use in the time of what? You will not get it. Sometimes, wait, let me pray. Let me pray when we are already in a what? Situation. Like the other man said, pray when you are in trouble. Then you are in trouble. When you pray when, when you are in trouble, then you are in what? Don't wait for things to get bad when you pray. Be prayed up. Hallelujah. Amen. Be prayed up. Are you hearing me? Amen. That's why when things are good, the money is there, everything is there in your house, that's the time of prayer. That's actually the time of fasting. Don't fast when your fridge is empty. You are running away. You are running away from the situation. You are running away from the situation. Are you hearing me? Yes. As for me, if, if I don't have enough uh, supplies in my house, I don't fast. Are you hearing me? Yes. I don't fast. If I don't have supplies in my house, I don't want. Fast. I fast when there is cheese in the fridge. Yes. When there is sausage in the fridge, then I fast. I hear it. Then I want. Fast. Hmm. I think I told you another testimony of the brethren where we were at in, in the high school. Mm. Mm. They would want to fast on a day where there is milk. Where they are serving milk and pop, they fast. <laughs> and uh, where they are serving colors, they will never fast. Until we say, hey, bro brothers, we don't want anyone fasting on Monday. Because there is milk and pop. But the day they will serve seven colors, first day, that's the first day. <laughs> and that's the what? That's the first. Hallelujah. Amen. So pray when things are good. Hallelujah. Amen. So that you obtain mercy to use in the time of need. This is where the church is in trouble. Hallelujah. Amen. All the prophecies we gave you from the beginning of the year, look at all of them. They are all coming to pass. Did you, did, you, did you see that? Mm. All of them are coming to pass. Yeah. That's why the beginning of the year we give you one for what the year is going to be. So that you pray before you get there. Hallelujah. Amen. So that you pray. I told you that prophet. Let me remind you. Remember I told you here on this platform that I saw shortage of bread. Do you remember? I told you that you are going to queue for bread. Are you praying? You have the turkey. You have the bread. You, you, are, you want to wait until it is not there. <laughs> but, but the prophet has told you, I saw you have a problem with bread. It's coming. Amen. So are you praying about it? Okay, it's fine. Enjoy the one you have. You will remember, you will remember this way now. You don't have it. Hallelujah. Amen. So we want to thank God. Let's go back to our proof text. I was just flowing as the Spirit of God leads me. Let's go back to our proof text of uh, Hebrews chapter 13. I'll conclude from there. I'll conclude from there. Hebrews chapter 12, verse, verse, verse 1. Read for me again, then let me finish from here. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Uh -huh. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Okay. Let us lay aside every weight. Every weight. And the sin which doth so easily beset us. That means sin that doeth easily beset us is that sin. Yeah, it, that sin that it has found you. Hallelujah. Amen. That sin that like easily take you. Mm. You know everyone is that kind of sin. Which doeth so easily beset you. That sin has actually caught you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It just gets you down. You know it. Hallelujah. A habit just that just gets you down. It just has you easily. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It has you easily. Do you understand what I'm saying? It so easily besets you. God is that kind of sin. 
And the Bible says that kind of sin, you have to lay it aside. Amen. You have to lay it out what? Aside. aside. That sin which you know, mm, this area is not okay. Hallelujah. Avoid. That's one way. Avoid. Hallelujah. Lay it aside. Lay it every way. Because um, we are in a race. Okay, read it. Read it. Finish, finish it. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Let us run with patience. You must never forget to underline this word. This race we are running, it is, we run it with what? Patience. We run it with what? Patience. Patience. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to have patience. Be patient. Amen. Amen. Be patient. Are you ready? Don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. Be patient. God wants us to be patient. Patience is a fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, let us follow the report of the elders. Who through faith and what? Passion inherited the promise. Through faith and what? Passion they inherited the promise. That's the book of Hebrews. Chapter 12, I believe. Yes. Through faith is the same chapter. Through faith and patience, they inherited the what? The promise. They did not inherit the promise through faith alone, but through faith and what? Patience. Hallelujah. Amen. So you are, you are present in this ministry. You have been part of it at its weakest moment. Hallelujah. Amen. But if you are patient, you will be part of it at its strongest moment. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. I'm speaking in part of it. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. So through faith and what? Patience. Don't lose patience. Because the moment your patience is gone, you are desperate. Amen. Amen. This is what is happening right now all over the world. People lose the patience of the spirit and they are desperate now. You don't mind the source. When you are desperate, you don't mind the source. You want solution and you want it now. Even if it means, means making a deal with the devil. You know, don't mind. You don't worry about it. Even if you want to make deal with the what? With the devil. It's better you remain childless than to go get child from Marine. You hear know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Better remain childless than to go get child from what? Amen. Marine. Because you are starting a generation of demons. So wait for God's what? Time. Wait for God's time. God's time is the what? You remember what happened in the life of Abraham? Hagar was, I mean, Sarah said, mm, I don't have that patience. Go and uh, have a child with my maid, and uh, the child will be mine. That's how Ishmael was what? Was born. But you saw what, right now, it is lack of patience that is happening between Palestine and Israel. Do you know that the war in Gaza, at Gaza, that war at Gaza, it will not end. It has been there. We were born, that war was there. We are now going to pass. That war is there. Who are fighting? Ishmael and Isaac. Ishmael and Isaac, the Gaza war. It's Ishmael, Palestine and Israel. They are ever fighting. And uh, I don't think anyone will, will quench the fire. It's prophetic. Nobody will be able to quench the what? The fire. This, the brothers are fighting because if only he had their dead patience to wait for God's promise. Hallelujah. Amen. Wait for God's time. In God's time, everything will be beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And when God's time has come, nobody can stop you. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Even when you are in the thickest of the bush, they will look for you. David was in the thickest of the bush, and there was a stand still. They said, we cannot sit down until that boy comes. Mm -hmm. uh, are you sharing this? Amen. They said, we will not sit down until that boy comes. Look for him, wherever he is. 
Hallelujah. Amen. I prophesy you in the name of Jesus. Amen. May you come to a season where they will look for you. Amen. Amen. They are going to look for you. Amen. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let them be a stand still Amen. until they find you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is going to be a stand still in that company Amen. until they find you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They had to find that boy who was forgotten. The part was going on and he was forgotten. Smelling the sheep. Hallelujah. In the thickest of the bush, others are eating meat and enjoying. And the time comes when God's time to lift you up comes. No one can stop you. Amen. No witchcraft can stop you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. No amount of sabotage can stop you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You will begin to rise. They will look for you where you are. Glory to God. Amen. I said we are not going to sit down until the boy comes. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh my Jesus. So let us run with passion. The rest, the rest that is said before us. The rest that is said before us. Somebody say there is a rest. There is a race. Set for me. Set for me. Let me comment something about the race. This race is not when somebody hears race, already somebody thinks about competition. <laughs> no. This race we are being spoken about here. Every one of us here, we have our unique race. Amen. Your race is tailor made for you. Amen. Tell them never, your race is tailor made for you. Your race is tailor made for you. Never, never waste your time trying to compete with Emily because she's running her race. You can never run your race. Because your race is tailor made for what? So trying to run my race, you're wasting time because you are leaving yours. Mine is tailor made for what? That's why I'm not worried. Okay? If I see my decon here, God is doing something, I say, ah. Praise God, because he's running his word. Yes. If we understand this, we will never be worried. Amen. We will never compete with our. Yes. You hear me? Yes. You will never be under pressure under if you pressure. see if you see someone coming with a hairstyle that, that is touching the ground. You will never worry. <laughs> because they are running their what? <laughs> you see somebody coming with the yes, they are touching the ground, you say, next week they are going to see me. Mine. Mine, mine will be at the door there. Mine will be at the door. You see what I'm talking about? They are wasting your time. Let me give you a secret. Compete with yourself. Why? Because there is always a better version of you. This Gangada you are seeing is a better version. So, what is the challenge ahead? When you see me next week, you have to see a better version of me. This you we are seeing is a better version of what? There is a very, the, if God can reveal that version of you, sometimes you say, what? Have you ever had dreams where you wake up and say, what, what was going on? What was going on? Yeah. Some of you here, you, you, you don't have things you just see yourself in a certain place. Some of you have never, you have never maybe gone in a plane or somewhere. But when you are in a dream, it's like you are flying that plane. Yeah. It's like you, you are flying that plane. You are the one flying. You say, what's going on? That's another version of you. Amen. Amen. There is a better version of you. So when you are running the race, compete with yourself. Amen. Say, tomorrow I want to be better. Tomorrow I want to be better. Amen. Tomorrow I want to be better. Hallelujah. Amen. Leave your neighbor. If your neighbor is going faster, leave them. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. What if they are driving a private car and you're driving a long truck? <laughs> you, do you think a long truck will go in the same speed with a private car? <laughs> Move with your speed. Don't worry. Compete with yourself. Yes. Amen. Are you like this, Amen? Yes. Say this after me. Say, my race. My race is tailor made for me. Is tailor made for me. Therefore, therefore, I will compete with myself. I will compete with myself because, because there is a better version of me. There is a better version of me. You are you, you are depriving us. This you you are showing us is not the one. We need a better you. Are, are you hearing me? Yes. We need a better you. 
Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Even you, you need a better you to show. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. I've heard a lot of people say, ah, that's not me. The way I behave today, that's not me. Say, so, ah, that's not me. That's not me. Why are they saying that's not me when it, it was them? They are trying to tell you that that vision, I don't appreciate it. They are trying to tell you that's not me. They are trying to tell you that vision, I do not appreciate that vision. I don't like that vision. That's not me. They tell you, what? Did I do this? That's not me. They, 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 they distance themselves from that kind of vision. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say poverty. Poverty. That's not me. That's not me. Say disappointment. Disappointment. That's not me. That's not me. Say limitation. Limitation. That's not me. That's not me. Say anger. Anger. That's not me. That's not me. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a better vision of you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we need that better vision of you to show. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. We need that better, that blessing in you. When that vision begins to show, you become a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. You become a blessing. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is it. This is it. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you blessed? Amen. Let's pray for you. Viewers all over the world, we pray for you. You have heard God's word that there is a better version of you. Don't compete with anyone. Compete with yourself. Because God wants that better version of you to manifest. Viewers will bless you. I will pray for you in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, we speak God's hand over your life. We speak blessing, breakthrough. We speak deliverance healing and restoration over you. Whatever you are facing, viewer, we are with you. May God bring a turn around in your situation. In the mighty name of Jesus, are you sick in your body? Be cured right now. Begin to receive your healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Are you facing trouble? We pray for God intervention. We pray for God intervention in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive the divine touch of God. In Jesus' mighty name, you are blessed, you are blessed. Thank you, viewers, for joining us. God bless you. Thank you so much. Rise up on your feet, rise up on your feet, church. Rise up on your feet, rise up. Oh, my God. I want you to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God.